Well, welcome to the Hold the Line podcast. I'm here with a hero in the faith, a pastor, a leader, a mentor, legend. This is Pastor Jensen Franklin, and we are in his church yeah. in Georgia. Well, it's been such an amazing experience to have you and the whole team. And we're about to go out in just a few minutes, and you're going to have a concert in the amphitheater. And uh, I just believe, you know, it's, it's just a ministry that God's raised up for times like these. What a week we've had, uh, we, you know, just uh, and all that's been going on in the world, Afghanistan, now a hurricane hitting. Uh, we, need, we need to absolutely lift up the name of Jesus. Yes. Pray and cry out to God. Yeah. It's time for revival. Come on. It is time for revival. And, and we, uh, you know, we're, we're so excited for tonight. Of course, we've been to, you know, over 130 cities and, and seeing the move of God. But one of the unique things is that we're, we're seeing such a, a historic season for the church. So, um, you know, COVID was in some ways a dividing line. And in some ways it's, it's showing who, who's willing to stand up, who's willing to rise up, who's willing to press in. And, you know, remarkably across the cities, even the difficult ones in America, the church is rising up. What, what sense do you have right now of where the church is at? You planted churches, you got churches across America, you have networks, you know leaders. What's your pulse right now across America from the perspective of a pastor? It feels like it's the beginning uh, of something fresh and new to me. And by that, I mean, we, we just had fallen into a, uh, a pattern, whatever you want to call it, in church to where, you know, we had it pretty much predicted, predictable of, of how things were going to go. And it, then it just felt like when COVID hit, it just kind of wrecked everybody's long-term plan. Now uh, every ministry is in the same boat. Yeah. Um, only the real people are standing strong who really, you know, are serious about God, serious about, uh, you know, drawing near to Him, serious about seeing our nation turned around. It seems like that there's a wake-up call going on in the spirit that God is saying, it's time. It's time to seek me. It's time. And the warfare, I, everyone I'm talking to, every leader that I know, every pastor that I know, every person, it, the warfare has been tremendous. <laughs> has it not? Yes. And I have never in my life experienced <laughs> anything like it. And, you know, I'm not a negative person kind of person or anything like that. And I'm not negative about the warfare. I don't blame the enemy. If I were him, I'd do everything I could to stop what's coming. I don't just believe it's coming. I believe it's here. I think your ministry specifically is fulfilling prophecy. I believe it's a cry to the sons and the daughters. I started my ministry in youth camps. That's when I started preaching. I, I have always had a lean toward reaching young people. We've been doing Forward Conference for decades now. And, um, and when I see what you're doing, what your worship is doing in cities that are war zones, cities that are so divided, cities that are just, just have been almost overtaken by some kind of spirit that's that's motivating people to hate and to and to drive this agenda that is taking freedom away from us um it feels like our worship is going to be our weapon that as we take that sensor like aaron you know he took a sensor and god said i want you to run out as the plague was coming through yeah. he said you run out and stand between the living and the dead yeah and swing that censer. And we know in Psalms that the, that the censer, the incense, he said our praise would rise and our prayers would rise like incense. So really what he was doing was he was swinging the censer of worship. Yeah. And, he was, and the Bible said, and the plague was stopped yeah. and, and he stood between the living and the dead. Yeah. And that kind of feels like what, where we are and I believe you're on the front line. For whatever reason, I love the connection that your ministry has to missions. Yeah. I love the fact that God is showing us through the underground church right. and then the threat of it here in America. I mean, some people say, well, that's just exaggerations. No, it's not. Yeah. I mean, when you see the things that are going on, the thing is this. 
Christianity can survive without America. Yeah. But America will not survive without Christianity. America will not survive without worship. Yeah. America yeah. will not survive without Jesus, right. without the Christian church. Right. And we have got to become more vocal than ever. I love that. I, and, you know, I was, I was thinking about just the divine connection and intersection with you and how last year, you know, uh, when we were building up to our, our gathering on the mall in D.C., which was, you know, a, a few days before the election, and it was on the, the, the evening of uh, the vote on Amy Coney Barrett, yeah. right? And we were gathered there, and it was difficult in that season to find leaders, I think, that would, that would stand with us for whatever reason. I know it was controversial, and you had the election, and then you had us, and we were called super spreaders. And, you know, this is before they, now they figured the science out that, you know, when you're outside, it's like impossible, almost impossible to catch this thing. And we had nobody, like we, we up to that point, we had gone to like 70 cities and zero cases, right? And we had like the, the mayor of Nashville, the mayor of New Orleans, they launched tr contact tracing to try to nail us and find anybody. They couldn't find anybody that got it from our gathering. Amazing. But when you stood up there on the mall in D.C. and, you know, Senator Josh Halley was there and we were praying and, and we didn't know each other that well, but you just took a stand and, and it was just like your courage and your boldness. And I remember, you know, it started to rain and, and you were preaching about the rain, you know, <laughs> America needs the rain, America needs the rain. I'll never forget that moment. And I just thought this is the this is the model of leadership that we need right now in this intense uh, uh, spirit that's trying to push the church into a corner, shut the church up, get us to put a muzzle on our on our mouth. You can't speak into this area of society. You can't speak into this area of society. Shut up. You know, don't meet. You're not essential. And you really modeled this courage. And I mean, I'm so excited that we get to be together again. Yeah. 20 years, 20 years to the date of September 11th. And you didn't you didn't even, I mean, that, that, would be a, that would be a great move for you to rebook the thing that, that week. But the way that I heard the story, and you can tell me if this is true or not, but you just asked for a date. Yeah. And that was the date. That yeah. I just think it's so amazing. With all that's going on, with everything that's happening, it's almost like a solemn assembly. Yeah. God yes. himself yes. has arranged it to where the body of Christ needs to come together. Yeah. We need to, to remember his faithfulness and remember yeah. who he is, that he's in control. But we also need to exalt him like never before. Yeah. Right there in Washington, yeah. D.C., me right. and my family, we can't wait to be there. We're, <laughs> we're going to believe God oh, for we, we can't wait to host you. And I, I, I do feel the weight and the significance of this yes. moment. And, you know, what's happening in, in the Middle East, what's happening in Washington, D.C., um, right now, I know people are filled with such discouragement on both sides of the aisle, right? No one's happy. Yeah. No one thinks that, that this administration is killing it. You know, that everyone is like, what is happening right now? Mm -hmm. And there's kind of like panic mode, you know? And I feel like, you know, I don't feel like the Lord causes, but I know he's going to use it to pull us into a place where it's like, he's our only hope. Mm. That's you know, he's our only hope. And I was thinking, I would love for you to share for a minute, you know, leading up to this historic gathering, you preached a message last week in, in Orange County when I was there that really impacted me about, about how the king was, was cutting out the prophetic word of Isaiah, cutting out the parts that he didn't like. Yeah. And it was so, it was such a picture of this generation yeah. that's moving with everything they can to cut out the parts they don't like of the Bible. They yeah. cut out the parts they don't like of our, you know, heritage, wow. trying to block it out and censor it and, and, and water it down. And, and, and we're feeling that right now. Of course, prayers removed from school, all this kind of stuff is happening, but it's this secular progressive agenda yeah. that really wants to remove God. And I, I was so impacted because that is a picture of what we're seeing. Yeah, it, it was actually the prophet Jeremiah and he had a word from the Lord and it started out, uh, or it ends with a word of restoration when God says in Jeremiah uh, 31, and uh, you will have a future filled with hope. Mm -hmm. And then he makes this promise, your children will return from the land of right. the enemy. But before all of that, he begins to say, if you, 
if you don't obey me, if you don't yeah. change, if you don't turn with all of your heart to me, this judgment is going to happen. This, this is going to happen. I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And the Bible said that the king, this is in, uh, I believe it's 2 Kings 24, he was sitting in his winter palace and they brought him the written message that Jeremiah had sent to be preached. And he sat and took what the Bible called a pen knife. It's a very strange scripture. And a pen knife, I looked it up, it's basically a little pocket knife. And he, by the, he was sitting in his winter house by the fireplace and he starts cutting out. He says, I like this part, leave that. That's the blessing part. That's the, my ticket to heaven <laughs> yeah. part. That's, you know, uh, the good part. But I don't like this part. And that's exact. And he started cutting out the, the parts of the message and the book that God had sent to him and throwing it into the fire. And that is exactly the spirit that is taking over yeah. many, many pulpits in America. Yeah, yeah, We're picking yeah. and choosing. Right. You can't pick and choose to never talk about abortion. Right. You can't Come pick on. and choose and cut out yeah, that yeah. message of, of Jeremiah 1 yeah. that before you were in your mother's womb, God right. knew you and ordained you and right. called you by name. Yeah. You can't cut out that marriage in the Bible, according to God's word, is, is between a man and a woman, a Come male on. and a yeah. female. Yeah. But we're cutting that out. We're right. cutting it out. Yeah. Let's cut that out. I don't want to be a cutting edge preacher. <laughs> I want to be a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah, come on. Now, I, and I'm not mad at anybody. Right, right. I'm not mean to yeah, anybody. Yeah. I'm not going to bully anybody. I'll right. fight anybody who tries to bully or hurt someone. Right. But I'm going to speak the truth in love. Come on. That's the command of God to the preachers and the pastors is speak the truth right. in love. Yeah. And my goodness, if we don't speak up, if we don't stand yeah. up, if we don't get our churches to a place that they're praying. I just really right. feel like for this church, the number one agenda, and I believe it's going to start tonight with yeah. you here, is I told our congregation before you ever got here, you don't know this, but I told them last few weeks ago, I said, we're going to start some kind of prayer meeting Come on. as the Lord leads me. Come and it's on. going to be, it's going to be worship and it's going to be prayer yeah. on Sunday evenings yeah. as I feel called. Right. We're yeah. going to, we're going to, we're going to seek the face of God. Right. And I, and I asked all who were interested to come and you know, we had over 1200 young people under the age of 20 cause I limited, Come I on. said only 20 and under. And we had over 20, well, I said 20 something and under and the 20 something and others and unders came. No, no gas, no nothing. Just a little unplugged band wow. seeking God. There's a hunger. Yeah. And that's why what you're doing Come on. is, I believe, prophetic and powerful. Let's quit cutting out the message. Let's Come quit on. slicing and dicing and throwing into the fire the truth of God's yeah. word. I mean, we cut out heaven and hell. We don't, you don't even hear anybody. I know. You know, if you don't repent, what's going to happen? Right, you know, right, you're right. going to go to an unkind place or, right, I don't, right, I don't, right, you know, right. what's going to happen in eternity? Yeah. What about the judgment? What about the coming of the Lord? Right. It, it, it actually is astounding to realize that we're dealing with a, although we have all the information we could ever need at our fingertips, right? right. We're dealing with the most biblically illiterate. Wow. Generation, my wife and I were talking about this because it's like we it, we can't just even take it for granted the things that we learned in the '90s, you know, going to Bible study, going to kids camp, doing all this kind of stuff. I mean, we we have to actually be intentional with our kids, right. you know. And it was funny because we we have this book so we're going good. through with our kids, and we're we, we, the chap the chapter we were going on last week was hell. Yeah. And we're explaining to them there is a place yeah. called hell. Yeah. You know, and or you can just cut that out and throw it into the Yeah, fire. I mean and, and and it's and it's unreal. And I'm I, I don't th that's what I feel like, you know, when I when I pray into the Acts 2 church, you know, mm -hmm. the, the church that wasn't afraid to be political, they weren't afraid to take a stand, they weren't afraid to speak truth. And it was the Holy Spirit empowered boldness. Like boldness was the what was so, what was recognized. You know, like they came together, they worshipped and prayed, and it's like what we're going to do tonight. And then that boldness that God gives us gives us the ability to speak the truth to culture. And I feel like maybe it is the fact that we haven't had those fiery prayer meetings or those fiery worship times. You know, in the worship industry, it's become just so. 
uh, plastic, you know, and it's like COVID really was the revealer of, do we believe the songs we're singing? Mm. You know, (laughs) because we would go around and worship leaders would write these songs about slaying the giants and doing all this stuff. They're online whining at us that we're not wearing a mask outside. And I'm like, we're singing your songs right now. Like, like, so it, it was a season where I feel like so much was revealed about what we believe theologically, Mm. you know, and, 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 and those pressures and those forces in the culture against us are feel stronger than ever to me, at least. Yeah. And, you know, you, you, you're going to have to make a decision. You're going to have to decide. You're going to have to stand with the word of God I don't care if you wear a mask or you don't wear a mask. Get back in church. Right, Get yeah, back in whatever on. your wherever your right, faith right, level yeah, is. You yeah. probably need to do that. Right. People ask me this, that, and the other. It doesn't. It, what's that got to do with 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 Jesus? Right. I'm saying to people. Get back in yeah. God's house. Get your yeah. family back in God's house. It feels like the you know the uh, the story of Gideon when when he said God said I'm gonna reduce your army. And he, and the first people he told to go home were those who were afraid. That's true. Is it not true? Yeah. Oh he said, gosh. all the fearful go home. And it feels like that the Lord has said, I've got to have, like you right. said, bold, yeah. courageous yeah. people that will stand up and stand out and say, you know, this nation's worth fighting for. Right. My faith is worth fighting yeah. for. Religious freedom, freedom right. of speech right. is worth, st- when I say fighting, not physically, but spiritually. Right. Yeah, totally. That's where our battle yeah. is. Yeah. It's a spiritual battle, but it comes through the teaching of God's word. And one thing the Lord spoke to me about this past election is he impressed upon me strongly. If I have to get up and harp about issues around election time, I have not done my job as a pastor. If my children in my children's ministry, all the way up in our teen ministry, in our college ministry, and our adults have not been taught the truth of God's word in a steady diet, a balanced truth that affects culture, that affects uh, everything, salt, light, being what Christ has called us to be, I'm not doing my job. Right. And I don't understand how the silence, the silence, right. you know, at some point you've, you, you will get criticized. Yeah. You will get yeah. persecuted. Right. You will. And, and boy, you, you, if anybody yeah. knows, you know, yeah. but, at, but at what cost do you, do you kind of, you know, I, I, I fear the Lord more right. than I fear yeah. people. Yeah, totally. Well, and I was thinking about that, you know, uh, wanting to ask you and, and discuss you know the election. Of course, you were you were involved at multiple times praying for the you know President Trump. You were a part of a, a faith community of leaders advising him, and then we had the shakedown in Georgia, which everything really came down to Georgia, right? right? And the Senate races the here. Devil came down. Yeah, exactly. The devil came down in Georgia. That's true. And 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 then and then now, of course, in 2022, you know, there's a lot of people running for that seat here in Georgia. We gotta, you know, we need to win that one back. What are your thoughts? Like, walk us through being a faith leader, having the invitation to speak and and have a place of influence, and then yet also having a church in a state that's very contested over right now. Yeah, it's not easy. And you are in a, uh, you're in a situation where uh, every motive is being questioned. Right. But for me, it's all about what does the word say? Yeah. And who comes in alignment there's always going to be a lesser of two evils. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Some people take offense at that any way you go, but it's just right. the truth. Yeah. So who, where are the, where are the biblical principles of the scriptures and, and how can I line up my vote behind the agenda? Right. It's not even the person. Yeah. It's not even the personality. Right. It's not even the, it's, it's what is the policy? Right. What is, the, where are they standing on the issues that the Bible is not silent right. about, is not grayish about, right. is not uh, wishy-washy about. Right. And whichever one lines up, I don't care who they are. I don't care what kind of background they come right. from. If they're lining up with those policies, those policies will bless America. Those policies, and I, and I'm, I believe in the Constitution. I believe that when, 
you know, that, that when we have those freedoms, that the church can right. be the church and the world is a better place when we have America strong and powerful and healthy. Yeah, yeah we, were, we were talking earlier today about the Middle East and, and how there was a different, dif, definite difference. You know, I was there in the Bush era, the Obama era, the, Bush, the uh, Trump era, and the difference between what was happening, taking place in Iraq when Obama was there and when Trump was there was day and night. I mean, in the, in the reaction of the people there towards America and reaction of the terrorists, you know, I mean, it was just like uh, the refugees, you know, I don't, I don't know that people understand and we're starting to see it now, but the vote that we have for, you know, our vote matters, not just in America, but it affects the nations Absolutely. of the earth. And we are seeing that in Afghanistan right now. We are seeing the fact that it's not even just millions of Americans or millions of babies which are impacted, but it's people groups around the world you're not even thinking about. And this is why it blows my mind how so many Christians will not engage in that civic duty. I mean, what, what's your encouragement to pastors and leaders to try to get their people to engage? I know that your people are very active. They've got engaged in elections. What do you say? Yeah. I don't tell people how to vote. I think that it's a sacred duty to vote, but I do say vote your faith. Yeah. Vote what yeah. your faith stands for. Yeah. And vote the candidate that is, or candidates that is closest to the will of yeah. God, which is the Word of God. Yeah. God's yeah. Word is His will. And I'm going to align myself with that and anyone who aligns with that, and boy, you don't listen to the talk and the hype. You look at yeah, the, the fruit word, yeah. of that policy. Yeah. What is the fruit? Is it death? Is it life? Is it, is it blessing? Is it cursing? Right. Is it obedience to God's word, whether it's marriage or whatever? Or, or what, what does the word say about it? And you line up yourself, who's on the Lord's side? Yeah. Isn't that what he said? Yeah, Who's on yeah, the Lord's side? Yeah. And that's what you kind of have to do. God's not, God's not Republican or Democrat. Yeah. He's God. Yeah. And he says, I'm not for either one of you. You better get as close right. to me as yeah, you can yeah. get because my will is going to be done. I'm, right. I'm going to rule and reign when it's all yeah. said and done. But I will say this. If we, if we don't stand up and speak up and do it now, we f it feels like that we are at a point uh, of uh, without, without the church being the church, we could be going down a road where we lose freedoms and never regain them again. Because yeah. it feels like something's going on. Yeah, a, yeah. A, a testing of the waters. Right, You know, right. how much can we take from right. the right. freedoms from yeah. the people and they just go along? Yeah, no, 100%. And I, I feel like... Uh, COVID was a real, it was a real test to see how far those guys could press it. You know, I know in California, it was like, well, we're going to see how far, you know, in the moment you give that stuff up, man, you can't, you can't get it back. Yeah. And so I've, I've been real, real proud watching leaders across California, even though it's crazy, leaders have, have risen up. They've sued the governor. They've won in the Supreme Court. They've taken a stand yeah. and they've held the line. Yeah. And that's what we need. And, and my prayer, even for oh, Georgia... Yes. My prayer even for Georgia, I mean, I think things have to shift here. Like this state is so significant. There's no question about it. It is, it is ground zero. I mean, we, 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 need, we need to see a turnaround in our nation and in our state here in Georgia, and we're believing God for that. Come on. Well, any last things as we're waiting? You know, we're two weeks away, a little less than two weeks to the mall in D.C., September 11th and 12th. Anything on your heart that you're feeling you're carrying or an expectation you can have to share with people? Well, we're just excited to be there. Um, if you've never been, I really <laughs> want to encourage you. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah. And um, I, was, I was invited to Franklin Graham's big prayer rally, and it was an honor to speak at that and pray at that. And it was incredible. The, the difference of, of the meeting that you had it just felt, I don't know, there was something about that night mm -hmm. that just, it felt so uh, prophetic. Yeah. Is, and, and it felt like the, the favor and the blessing of God, just like it was on Franklin and his meeting to pray, it was on your meeting 
for worship. Wow. And you just don't know how that feels when you stand there and you're looking at all the monuments and you see the Capitol behind you and you mm -hmm. see all of this before yeah. you, the White House from a distance, yeah. and see tens of thousands of hands raised and the worship going wow. forth. It's really powerful, isn't it? Man, it is. It, and, it's and surreal. speakers giving yeah, the word of the yeah. Lord as God gives and, it, and and, just, and legislators getting up there and praying. I mean, it, it yeah. helps. It helps reframe so your mind to get God's heart for our capital. That's right. You know, that's what it does for me. Every right. time I go there, I'm like, I get so frustrated at DC and ah, DC and everyone's DC. But the moment you're standing there and you feel the presence of God, it's like you get a burden. You're like, no, we have to see breakthrough in this city. We Let have me to ask see you revival. Something. Because people don't believe that we do this. You know what I've been doing the last week, every day, reminding myself to pray for our present president, President Joe Biden, and his administration. Yeah. Whoever the president is, yeah. I did it when President Trump was president. Yeah. We need to pray for this president and yeah. for his administration because we I mean, who, whoever, the scripture commands yeah. to pray for those in authority. Yeah. And so I pray that even at that meeting, we will call out his name yeah. and we will pray for that man and his administration and Vice President Harris because prayer is, can change things. On, prayer can, can bring a visitation yeah. of God to the Capitol, to the White House. God can do it. Come on. So let's can. do it. We are. We're going to so do it. We're going to pray church. for them all. We're going to invite them all. Good. We'll see who shows up. I love it. And it's going to be a party. So we'll see you guys very soon, a week and a half on the mall in D.C. Thank you so much. Love you, man. For being. Appreciate love you. you so much. We are so grateful for you and Thank Free you. Chapel and your Thank family you. and your ministry. God bless.